Hi folks, this is video number 143. The title is The Second Airport. It's uh, January 22nd, 2020. Naming a little airport over the hill from my house is Gracie Farms Airport. In the first half of the 1900s, it was a thriving dairy farm. The milk was processed at the creamery just above Providence Square on Oak Street in Scranton. My dad worked there for a time. There were three or four barns, all were built with reddish-orange terracotta blocks. The buildings and grounds were groomed and clean. It was a showplace for sure. There were two to three hundred Guernsey cows. They're similar to Holsteins, but red and white as opposed to black and white. Dad told me Guernsey cows gave a higher butter fat level than Holsteins at that time. I can't remember sh for sure who owned Gracie Farms. It was either Mr. Moffat or Mr. Pfister. They were both local aristocrats tied to the coal industry. Gracie was the name of the owner's wife or mother, as I recall. The farm went up for sale and became a second campus for the heavy equipment school. The barn clean-outs and inventory of all the possibilities occurred while I was still working at the school. There were ten acres of lawn. I mowed it with a rider a couple times. It took two days. I kept in touch with my old boss and the director of training. The director's son, Nick, attended the same two levels of Fort Belvoir training a year ahead of me. Nick and I planned to be trainers at the new heavy equipment mechanics school that was the plan for the farm. Unfortunately, it never happened. I don't really know the reason, but it's probably funding. It's a huge investment for sure. I don't know what it's like around the barn area today or who owns it, as the entrances are all posted as private drives. <clears throat> now, how to become a small airport. <laughs> Once on a weekend pass, I came home accompanied by my friend Ross Adams. Ross was from Neosho, Missouri. It is located in the southwest corner, not far from Joplin. Neosho was almost wiped off the map a few years ago by a tornado. Ross's family farm was be between Neosho and Joplin. That area is, is as flat as a tabletop. Ross was petrified riding around with me. Traveling around Lake Sheridan, for example, caused him to be grabbing the door handle. <laughs> anyway, we stopped over to see Jay, my old boss. He asked if he wanted to work on a project. We said, sure, what's up? He said he needed a landing strip behind his house. He said he could use whatever equipment we wanted. So we agreed on the 20-ton Buffalo Springfield roller and the Cat 922 rubber-tired loader. During the barn clean-out, I dug a huge pit with a Cat 977 to use as a fire pit. It was still a good-sized mound of dirt we could use for filling low spots in the field. Ross wanted to run the roller. Now, Ross was about 5 foot 2 and maybe 110 pounds. The 20-ton roller had cast-iron rear wheels and front roller. The rear wheels were at least 6 feet tall. In this short video I plugged in, and some of you will be able to see, this is a 10-ton roller of the same vintage. Rear wheels are only about 4 feet high on it. To steer this beast, it had to be moving. It was steered by a vertical steering wheel on the end of a long shaft that went to a big worm gear that turned the front roller. No assist on this bad boy. It was all manpower. The steering wheel had a big suicide knob on it. You actually had to use both hands as well as push to get it started to turn. My little friend Ross loved it. He had a great time. We spent about four hours creating a nice strip. Ross ran the roller back and forth overlapping passes. I made the low spots visible for me. I ran the loader back and forth from the dirt pile and dumped the bucket on the run. We, we stopped figuring when we had a pretty good strip created. We took Jay over to school to get his plane. We came back to the farm and Jay made a nice smooth landing without much wheel strut flex at all. Jay offered to give us a plane ride. Ross went first. We got about 20 minutes or so. Then it was my turn. 
We took off and Jay was showing me how to use the controls. It was fun. As we flew over our house, Mom was outside. See, I mentioned she was going to clean the blinds today. I asked Jay if, if we could buzz the house. He reminded me that you really aren't supposed to do that stuff. He started looking around for other aircraft. There was none. He then told me to push the yoke all the way forward. Right into a nosedive we went. Then he told me to pull back when he said to. The plane had dual controls, kind of like a student driver deal. <laughs> we started out at 2,500 feet. When we pulled back and buzzed the house and regained altitude, we cleared the house by about 50 feet or so. It was closer than that because about 10 feet off the end of the front porch was a 40-foot hemlock. <laughs> Over the years, I've done about everything in aircraft but crash. I drive everywhere. From this experience, I found flying can be fun, but only if you're doing the driving. The airstrip is still in existence and is listed as use by permission only. Jay passed away a couple years ago, so I have no idea who owns it now. It's nice to know it's still useful. As a little side note. When we got back to the house, my mother says, A crazy boss of yours almost took the shingles off the house. I said, That wasn't him. Well, it looked like his plane. I said, Well, yeah. He says, I was with him. He said, I was doing the flying. I seen a look on my mother's face. I don't know if she wanted to, to yell at me or hit me. <laughs> Her eyes got as big as saucers. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Yeah. That was something. I started to laugh and she didn't know what to do. <laughs> it was a memorable day for sure. All the best, folks. All the best.